I don't know. I feel like I should do something like that, although... I do it last. To be honest, what I... Yeah, you did. <laughs> Actually, you should be up here to sing us in. Hello everyone, I'm Jack Matheson, the Chief Nursing Officer here at Peter Mac, and it's my absolute pleasure to welcome you here, albeit virtually, to our Grad Info Evening tonight. I'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land and paying my respects to Elders past, present and emerging. What you will see is the Menti instructions pop up on the screen in a few minutes, so if you can log into that um, using the website and the number, 
you'll be able to log questions throughout the night and then we can make sure that we come back to those and answer as many as we can at the end of the session. So when I'm asked about why you should start your nursing career at Peter Mac, to be honest, I could probably spend about the next two hours talking about it, but I have narrowed it down to the top three. The first for me would be the sense of team and support. No matter what clinical area you work in, the sense of team that we have amongst nurses is incredibly supportive. And not only is it amongst our nursing teams, but we work really closely within our multidisciplinary teams. So no matter who you interact with, whether it's the doctors, pharmacists, allied health or PSAs, everyone is here to help you and to the support the patient. I think what helps that is all staff at Peter Mag are very much aligned with a common purpose. And that is working with patients and supporting them through their cancer treatment and helping them get through what is often an incredibly stressful time in their life as seamlessly as possible. The second would be our career opportunities. We have a real focus here within nursing on advanced practice roles and the development of new roles. We're in the midst of launching our professional practice framework that clearly outlines all the opportunities for nurses at every level. As you will learn here, there are many diverse nursing roles at Peter Mac that are integral to the running of the hospital. We value the individual skill set that our nurses bring, and we want to create an opportunity for you to thrive in this organisation. The third would be the focus that we have on staff wellbeing. We absolutely know that working in cancer care can be incredibly stressful. And in fact, transitioning to your first year of nursing can be very stressful as you move from full-time student to full-time nurse. A couple of years ago, we launched a program called CARE, which stands for Compassion and Resilience Education. It's where we teach you strategies to make sure that when you find yourself in a situation with lots of different stresses, either inside or outside of work, you have the strategies to be able to put into place to manage it. But also, you know who at Peter Mac you can talk to and escalate your concerns to. The number one thing we want you to remember is that we are here to work with you and it's okay to not be okay. We want to support you to be the best that you can be at work so that you can continue to provide excellent care to our patients. I'd like to say a massive thank you tonight to our grad coordination and support team, Michelle and Georgia, who you will no doubt hear from later on this evening, plus the extended ANU team, many of whom are in the room with us tonight. They are the reason that we have such a successful grad program and also the reason why you will find that so many of our past graduates actually hold nursing leadership positions across the organisation today. It's the skill and expertise in this team and the commitment to nursing development which is invaluable. So without further ado and to kick off tonight, I would like to welcome Professor Maya Krishnasamy. She is the Director of our Academic Nursing Unit who will talk to you about advancing nursing practice at Peter Mac. And I very much look forward to meeting some of you at the start of 2022. This thing off. Where am I looking up there? Welcome to all of you online. It's fantastic to know that so many of you are out there and it's an absolute pleasure to have a chance to tell you a little bit about Piramac. Jack's already told you about our values as an organisation. We are about the patients, first, second, third and lastly, it's all about the patients. And so what we want, what I want to do over the next sort of 10 minutes or so is just talk to you about the kind of opportunities that we have here at Piramac for uh, nurses coming in, what you can do as a grad nurse and where you can go. But before I do that, I too want to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on where we meet tonight and wherever you may be. We're on the land of the Wurundjeri people with Kula Nation and I would like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emergent. So you're there, you've tuned in, you're thinking about maybe Peter Mac, maybe not. You know, you really don't want to think about anywhere else, but, you know, we'll take it that you have to consider that. But there are a couple of things, and I put four things on my list that I just want to touch through with you. One, why cancer? Secondly, what does a diagnosis of cancer do to somebody? And many of you, like many of us in the room, will know that from personal experience, perhaps, through either watching a family member or a friend, or perhaps even ourselves. But I just want to put that question out there about 
What does it do? And therefore, why do we need the best nurses possible working here at Piramac? Or maybe why do we want the best nurses coming here if, at the beginning of their career to learn to take amazing skills to other parts of the state or the country to work? Thirdly, I want to ask that question of us, well then, what is cancer nursing? And what is so special about it? And as Jack said, we could be here for hours talking about that, but I'll try and curb my enthusiasm. And then lastly, if you are going to be a cancer nurse, what does Peter Mac offer you that perhaps you wouldn't have somewhere else? So let's go back to that first question. Um, you know, that issue of why cancer? Why pay attention and think about, at the point at which you're at, why cancer? Well, just in this year alone in Australia, there have been about 150,000 new diagnoses. That's not the people already living with the diseases of cancer. There's many of them, of course. But there'll be 150,000 new individuals, families, friends, all impacted by a diagnosis of cancer just this year here in Australia. And those people need exemplary care. They may have a cancer that can be cured within you know, very straightforward time frame. But that doesn't mean that that's an easy experience for people, knowing that you have a cancer that's cur curative and can be treated in a relatively short space of time doesn't make it any less impactful when it happens. We know that cancer is largely a, di a disease of older adults. We're an ageing population. Two thirds of that 150,000 diagnoses will be in people aged over 65. And so when you think about cancer, you can it's becoming increasingly more difficult to think about it as a standalone disease. And we need nurses at the top of their game who can look after people not just with a cancer diagnosis, but perhaps with all of the other comorbidities that people come and bring with them alongside a diagnosis of cancer as we age. We've also got younger people, of course, but the vast majority of our care is in older adults. And I'll talk a bit more about that in a moment. But alongside those new diagnoses, we have almost one and a half million people in Australia living beyond a diagnosis of cancer. So we have a community of people who require ongoing care, chronic sort of health management issues because their treatment may well have cured their cancer, but it may have brought many of the challenging uh, conditions that they have to live with and will have to live with for the rest of their lives. So why cancer? Because it's a huge problem for our community. It touches almost every single one of us. And it is complex, it is evolving, and it needs nurses who can think critically, who want to be in a dynamic environment, and who need acute skills that you can take anywhere. It doesn't confine you to cancer. You can take anywhere with you, wherever you choose to nurse. So that's the argument of why you think about cancer coming into your grad nurse. Then what does a diagnosis of cancer do? Well, hopefully for many of you, you'll have no idea. But for many, many people who've, been, who've experienced it either personally or as a family member or a close family member, it is one of the most frightening of all illness diagnoses. We instantly conjure up uh, images of a rapid death, perhaps a painful death, a complicated death. Of course, that is not the image now of a cancer diagnosis. And we know we have remarkable treatments. It is one of the most dynamic, fastly changing medical specialties of all the specialties. It's certainly by far the most costly. We have incredible technologies, incredible new drugs, immunotherapies, targeted therapies, CAR T cells, incredible surgery, phenomenal technology for radiation oncology. So it is an incredibly complex arena to work in. And so coming in, as somebody who has heard that sentence, I'm really sorry, it is a cancer, it's breast cancer, or it's liver cancer, or it's lung cancer, whatever it may be. People come into a system that is incredibly complex. It is very rare for somebody to have one kind of treatment. So they may see a medical oncologist, they may see a specialist radiation oncology nurse, they may see a specialist surgical oncology nurse. They may see up to, and actually we know from the evidence, people at the point of a new diagnosis may say up to 35 different healthcare professionals in the first two weeks of being diagnosed. And in there, we need nurses who can hold people and say, it's okay, we're going to be with you every single step of the way. We have nurses who can help you understand what your cancer is, 
why you need a particular kind of treatment, what the side effects are likely to be, how we can act quickly to make sure that those side effects have the least amount of effect possible on you. We can talk with your families. We can help you explain to your children, to your co-workers. It is a diagnosis that impacts every aspect of somebody's life. And as a cancer nurse, you need to be able to have a conversation about what are we going to do with your dog while you're here for three weeks having treatment, all the way through to actually what are we going to do about managing the incredible myelosuppression that you may experience as a result of your treatment and everything in between. To look somebody in the eye and sit with them when they say, I've come in for my last treatment and I know I won't be going home. Or to be with that person, they say, I've finished my treatment, I'm off back home, I'm back to work and things are looking great. So these are the opportunities if you choose to come and work at Peter Mac. So what is cancer nursing? It can be anything you want it to be. It can be um, an opportunity, as it will for many of you if you choose to come here and come to Peter Mac, where you start that generalist knowledge, understanding cancer biology, understanding the essentials of cancer. And we have opportunities for those generalist roles. How do we work with people who are surviving their cancer diagnosis, still needing to understand the stuff about cancer and cancer treatment, but really working at a much broader, more generous level with people about keeping them well. You can work as a specialist. You can work within medical oncology, radiation oncology, surgical oncology, and you can really specialize within a particular mode of treatment with people across many different kinds of cancer diagnoses. You can be a subspecialist nurse. You can work with people with breast cancer, lung cancer, stomach cancer, sarcoma, hematological diseases. You can funnel down through your career and really subspecialize. You can subspecialize further and become a nurse practitioner who cares for people having immunotherapy or CAR T cell therapy. So you're, you can absolutely become anything that you want to be. You can be an exemplary nurse manager, cancer nurse educator, cancer nurse researcher. It's all at Peter Mac. Anything that you would want to do is here, and we can support you to do that. And so I want to come to what Jack was talking about, that um, launch that we're having around our professional practice model and framework. And we are quite unique, not just in Melbourne, but in Australia, in being one of, if not the only, one of very few organisations that has a professional practice framework for its nurses that says, come in as a graduate nurse and we will help you move from novice to competent, to proficient, to expert nurse. We will show you the pathway and we have absolute frameworks and pathways that show you how you can get there, what roles you can take to get there, what academic support you will need and qualifications you will need. And we can help you map out that career pathway. You can come in, spend a couple of years trying different things, establishing yourself. But from point of beginning, we can help you think about what the enormity of possibility and opportunity is for you here at Peter Mac. We have a remarkable team of clinical nurse educators. Jack mentioned Georgia and Michelle here, who are our ex absolutely exemplary grad support nurses, programs and managers. And, um, you know, they have an understanding of your needs that, are, that has come from years of experience of watching nurses come in, transition, understanding what the pressures are, when you need the support, when to step back a bit, when to step in a bit. We have a fantastic team of clinical nurse educators who work within divisions, who work with um, you know, that grad program, who work with our clinical nurse specialists, our nurse managers, our nurse practitioners, our clinical nurse consultants, to really create an environment of learning that will be with you and around you from the day you come in to the day you choose to leave us, however long that may be. We have roles here that are not possible in many other organisations. You can be a clinician, a clinician educator, a clinician researcher. We have a vibrant and growing programme of nurse-led clinical research. We can help you to be whatever you want. So have a think about it. Have a think about some of those things I've said. If you're the kind of person that likes a challenge, that likes an environment that is never the same from one day to the next, let alone one month to the next, that will allow you to have an opportunity of a career where you can move from this broad understanding to a subspecialist and work with a disease that affects our community, wherever it is, whoever you are, then this is the place for you and we would love to have you come and join us.
Thank you. Oh, and I've forgotten. <laughs> I knew I would. It's on my list and I didn't look. What I'd like to do next is introduce you to um, our amazing clinical staff and their environment. They're really sorry that they can't be here with you to see you in person, but they have put a video together. We really want you to see the kinds of people that you would be working with if you come here to Piramac. So I'm going to hand over, Trevor, are you in charge of videos or we're going to hand over, it should happen magically uh, and we'll wait for the video to come. but very supportive environment. Um, we've got a lot of educators and nurses in charge and senior nurses that are very willing to help all the time and you learn something new every day. And I feel like I've developed a lot of skills in the, the short time that I'm here already. And I think these skills are um, very transferable to the ward. I think Peter Mac is very special in that it's, it doesn't take a really large volume of nurses, but that is very special because you get a lot of guidance and a lot of support and you know your educators know who you are the people on the floor know who you are and it just makes you feel like you're not just a number you're you know you're special and you were picked here for a reason and they're really welcoming of you and you know it just makes you want to be the best grad nurse that you can be here Hi, my name's Nadine and I'm the nurse unit manager on Ward 3A. Ward 3A is the ideal unit to come and complete your graduate rotation on. We're a 32 bed unit that cares for patients with medical oncology needs, as well as adolescents and young adults experiencing a cancer diagnosis. On Ward 3A, you have the opportunity to learn and see the spectrum of cancer treatments and their side effects from chemotherapy, radiotherapy, immunotherapy, as well as surgical and radiological interventions. Graduates are a really valued part of the nursing team and it's our key focus to provide education, support and development to enable you to be the best nurse that you can be, but most importantly, to enable you to deliver exceptional patient care. Hi, my name's Hayley. I'm a practice development nurse on Ward 3A. I began my role here in the graduate program. I work with graduate nurses on Ward 3A to help develop them, to challenge them, to make them think critically and to, um, to support them as they grow through this whole process of learning to become a nurse, an independent nurse. It was by chance that I applied to Peter Mac. I came to the information evening in 2013 and thought, this is the place I want to work. Their support that they, su that they supplied 
um, or that was provided to us as graduate nurses is really what drew me in because I wanted that support while I was learning to be a nurse. Um, and it's one that I've never looked back on. I've never really thought of working anywhere else. Um, so Ward 3A is a really, really wonderful ward. We care for patients who are young adolescents through to elderly patients. Uh, you'll see patients that are going through all different um, cancer diagnoses under a medical oncology treatment plan. So we'll have patients having chemotherapy. So graduate nurses will be looking after patients who are, are suffering from their side effects. And so they come in and we look after their nausea or their febrile neutropenia or their temperatures and all of the other side effects that come along with chemotherapy, as well as patients having their radiotherapy and their, their ongoing treatment of that, but also the side effects of that and anywhere through to complex social issues that um, can challenge us mentally and emotionally, but also challenge us in a really invigorating way. So we did our graduate year in 2019, 19. and we shared a rotation on this ward and really loved it. Ward 3A is a really interesting ward. There is um, a lot of uh, different patient mixes, and you get to learn really good head-to-toe assessments I'd say the culture is really good, like just peer to peer, or you know, the skill mix, however varied. It's you never feel uncomfortable talking to somebody, asking help from a peer, or of course the education support staff. They're always around to give you a hand. Well, cancer imaging is a really dynamic area to learn and to grow as a nurse, and you get to see a full range of oncology patients come through through any stage of their treatment. So diagnostic phase, during their treatment, to see how the treatment is progressing, um, and also towards the end. So just to see what improvements have been made with our treatment here at Peter Mac. Because we have a really large range of modalities where nurses have to learn and grow. So it's not just, um, we have a big range of interventional procedures. So it's a little bit of surgical um, nursing, but we also have a lot of oncology and medical and hematology nursing skill growth during a nurse's time in our department. And I find that very rewarding as they progress through the different areas and modalities in our department. It's fantastic. But in the department itself, there are 200 patients a day go through here. Not many people know how busy we get, but it's really that core patient assessment skills, um, both before a procedure and after a procedure, and learning a lot about the different stages of treatment that our oncology patients receive as well. So you get to know a lot across the patient journey in our department. As nurses develop and grow, it can start with patient care and then it grows into scrub scout roles in our procedural areas. It can working with the haematology medical teams and doing bone marrow biopsies as well, so care of that stream of patients. Um, and also the molecular therapy um, treatment as well. So we're internationally renowned as a centre for the neuroendocrine tumour service. Or, yeah, around the world, so that's very exciting. So it's a really big breadth of skill and knowledge that they do learn here. When you think about cancer imaging, you can think about procedures as well as uh, images. Um, and in that, um, in the department, you've got ultrasound, uh, you've got x-rays, you've got MRI, you've got what we like to call the trolley bay, which is kind of like a mini emergency department. So as a grad, you can experience many different patients in that area. Um, and you've also got the diagnostic side of things. So there are things such as PET scans, ultrasound scans, as well as uh, therapies that we provide. So we do provide treatments here in the cancer imaging space um, through nuclear medicine, and those are lutate therapies. So as you can see, as a grad, you, not every single day is going to be the same because we've got so many modalities and so many things that we provide for patients. So within the cancer imaging department, one of the big skills that we tend to, to perform on a daily basis would be IV cannulation, as well as accessing and deaccessing ports. But our big, big thing that we try to encourage in grads is communication, because at the base of it all, we're communicating with patients in the cancer imaging department. We're educating them about what a port is, how it's going to be inserted, how it can be looked after. 
we're educating them about how fluid accumulates in the belly and why we would put a, a tap in there to drain fluid. Um, and then we're also liaising with many clinicians about patient care and when they're um, showing signs of deterioration and how we can help support them through those situations as well. If you like variety, if you like learning new things, if you're willing to put yourself out of the comfort zone of a ward and you want to see a patient through their trajectory, so from diagnosis to, to treatment to, um, you know, when, they, when they've recovered, then cancer imaging is a place that you should, should preference. I chose Peter Mac because I'd done three placements at Peter Mac and I'd had wonderful experiences during all of my placements and an interest in haematology, so I wanted to come back to Peter Mac. I think working with patients and their families, um, sometimes we have patients for multiple days in a row and it's a really good opportunity to build rapport with your patients and get them to know really well and see them throughout their treatment journey. Today I looked after some patients that had some IV antibiotics and some patients that required some blood transfusions and a patient who went down for a PET scan um, as part of their treatment. I think it's a good opportunity if you want to um, work in an environment where you have um, a high patient acuity and lots of IV medications and um, really refine your patient assessment skills. Um, so my name's Casey, I'm a, um, I'm a nurse on Ward 5A. I was a, a graduate nurse last year in 2020 um, and I did my whole year of my grad year um, on Ward 5A and I've stayed on um, going forward. I like the variety. We, we have mostly haematology patients but some um, medical oncology patients um, on the odd occasion will get a surgical patient or, or something um, a, bit, a bit different as well um, and it's, it's been a good opportunity to sort of um, get a really, really good understanding of haematology as well as um, breast cancer and, and a, few other, um, a few other sort of medical oncology um, type patients. Um, we see um, CAR-T patients come through, which has been really interesting to start looking after the CAR-T patients. Um, so today, I think, was a particularly busy day. Um, I had a patient who um, has been very hypoxic um, and they're sort of, and he's on airborne, airborne precautions because um, they're sort of trying to investigate if he has TB or um, a chemo-induced lung toxicity or something else entirely. So he had to go for a bronchoscopy, um, so I took him across to theatre, um, but we had to sort of make sure that he was stable enough to transport, be transported across um, not on high flow oxygen. So that was a bit of a challenge. Um, I had another patient who had been part of a clinical trial um, and was admitted for sort of CRS monitoring. Um, and I was able to discharge him today and he was really, really happy about that. Um, and he needed a blood transfusion before he went. So I was able to do that and provide all the discharge information and education that, that him and his family needed um, to get them home for the weekend, which was great. you 
Hi, my name is Josh. I'm a graduate nurse here at Peter Mac. I work in operating theatre. I'm a scrub scout. So the scrub scout works closely with the surgical team. Um, we play a huge role in providing and delivering a smooth and successful surgery. Our main focus is preparing equipment, setting up sterility, maintaining um, patient care where the eyes and ears are the operating room um, while the patient is asleep. Grads should come to theatre because it's an awesome team down here. We have a massive team. We work with different people all the time, different surgeons, different anaesthetists, different nurses, and we're very broad in what we do. We do some amazing procedures and we're the front line of cancer treatment, especially at Peter Mac, where one of the main interventions is surgical. So we're always doing really cool stuff and it's helping people in their life. We assist the anaesthetists with their um, to So recovery nurse. So we receive patients from theatre post anaesthetic and we monitor and control pain and we safely prepare patients for discharge to the ward or home if they have a more day procedure. The grads should pick theatre as it's a brand new challenge. I don't believe students really get that much exposure whilst at university. At Peter Mac we have a really supportive um, theatre team as well as education. Uh, it exposes you to high acuity situations and really develops your skills as a graduate nurse. We want you. 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 on Ward 6A, which is our surgical oncology ward here at Peter Mac. We have a big 32 bed, very vibrant ward, and there's about 70 nurses work on this ward. And we work really collaboratively with the allied health teams, our medical teams, and all of our specialist teams here at Peter Mac. And we look after patients post their procedures and when they've had all sorts of colorectal cancers, upper GI, breast cancer, gynae, urology, we do a lot of skin and plastic surgery. I probably missed something in there, but we do a lot. It's a great team here on Ward 6A. We really work together to achieve really great patient outcomes and it'd be great if you wanted to come join our team. <laughs> Mostly being that I knew I wanted to specialise in oncology nursing. I think it's just a field that your days can be as equally challenging as they are rewarding. And it's a constantly evolving field and Peter Mac is at the forefront of a lot of the new treatments and research coming out. So it's a really unique opportunity being a part of the team. And specifically being um, part of the grad program, it's a very structured program and you're constantly supported through it but your own personal goals are also taken into account, which I think is just amazing. So being a part of the PMI my team in general and just in the grad program, I think opens up a lot of different opportunities for where you'd like to take your career. So on 6 eight, we care for patients who've had a range of very specialized surgeries, which means every day you're learning about new things that help you consolidate your understanding to better care for your patients. I'm loving getting to meet my patients every day and becoming part of their journey, even if it's just for one shift. And working alongside an incredible team on the ward who are so kind and empathetic and genuinely passionate about what they do and they're also hilarious, so coming to work every day is really fun, even if it gets busy, and I feel very lucky to be part of the family here. So this 
support system in uh, at the Peter Mag graduate program is quite extensive. You can get support from literally anywhere, starting from your nuns to the A nuns from that shift. You have a practice development nurse as well that helps you in every of your shift if you need the help. And the most important one is the nurses around you. They are the most biggest support um, system that you can have. So my name's Jenny. I'm one of the professional development nurses here on Ward 6A. I'm currently sharing this role with another nurse, uh, Angela Spratt. So some of the skills that you'll uh, gather as part of your time as a graduate nurse here on Ward 6A is uh, caring for the post-operative patient. So we have a number of tumour streams here and uh, care of the post-operative patient looks after things like acute pain and nausea and drain tube management wounds. We have a number of quite uh, complex wounds um, so using things like negative pressure therapy. We also work very closely with all of the um, grad support team as well to help you navigate the competencies here. So in your first rotation here, you'll be looking at things like patient controlled analgesia. Uh, and then in your second rotation, we look at things such as a central venous access device. So things like um, ports uh, and pick lines, which we use a lot here and then also uh, inserting nasogastric tubes. So a large uh, proportion of our patients are colorectal and upper GI patients, and this is a skill that uh, you'll become quite familiar and quite skilled at. In your graduate year, role is covered from 8.30 to 5, so that means that morning shifts, you have access to ourselves and the graduate support team um, from the morning right through your shift, and in the afternoons, you touch base with us. Make sure that you're all ready to go for the afternoon, and then we can help liaise with other senior staff or ANUMs to make sure that you know any new tasks or skills that you haven't covered before you can be supported with in those hours where we're not there. I certainly know why I've been at Peter Mac so long after seeing those videos. I'm Michelle, I coordinate the Graduate Nurse Program here at Peter Mac, and for the next 10 minutes I'm going to talk to you more about the program itself, um, as well as the application process. So we know that you've worked incredibly hard over the last three or two years, depending on whether you've completed a master or a, or a degree, um, in, look, in learning and um, both with your theory and your practice. So the aim of the Graduate Nurse Program is to help consolidate what you've learnt as well as provide you with many opportunities to learn so much more in a very acute environment. There's a lot of support structure around you and um, I know that you've heard throughout from the videos um, from the clinical staff and from the graduate nurses that support is something that we um, work really hard at um, we ins to ensure that we've got a really good um, learning culture. So it's not just up to the graduate support team, it's up to every nurse to um, support you in your, um, in your learning throughout the year and, and I'm sure you've heard that from in, within the videos. So at P at the, um, within our program we have 30 plus positions. Um, the positions are four days a week um, unless you complete an allocation in um, theatre, which is full time. There's two intakes and they are February and March. When the graduate nurses apply for the jobs, they're applying for an ongoing contract. So once you're um, employed as a graduate nurse, we hope to keep you here for a very long time. So this is what the structure of the Graduate Nurse Program. So we have a very comprehensive orientation program, um, including hospital, nursing and graduate nurse program. We also trialled a clinical skills workshop for this year, knowing the challenges that undergraduate nurses had um, because of the pandemic. We included a workshop which looked at fundamental nursing skills. So for example, uh, medication administration, um, patient health assessment, to help um, 
consolidate what you've learnt from undergrad and in a really safe environment prior to moving into the clinical setting. So we will continue to do that for next year, which will be great. And we're really lucky to have seven day supernumerary. Um, this gives you the opportunity to transition into the clinical area with that support around you. We've put together a framework for preceptors to help with the guidance. So it's a, a very structured framework with the intent of helping to support you throughout that really important transitional phase of your, of your first couple of days in the clinical area. You have two days um, supernumerary when you rotate. So we have an option of doing two six months, um, um, two six month rotations or allocation to the one area. If you do do a two six month rotation, you'll have two days supernumerary in your, in, your, in your second six months, giving you time to adjust to the different patient population and the people around you. We have a number of short courses and the aim of the short courses is to help link the theory to your practice. So for example, if you're working in the surgical ward, you'd be allocated to the short course, the surgical nursing short course or the epidural short course. So you can learn the theory and then bring, back, bring that back to the unit. The short, there are study day, um, you get a study day for the short courses as well as they're paid for as well. We also have a number of graduate nurse program meetings and reflection, setting, um, reflection sessions. So these are a really good opportunity for the group to come together. So because we are a smaller program, we're able to have at least half the group um, in, in the same room at the one time. So a really great way for the theatre nurses to talk about what they're doing and then the nurses in the surgical ward to say, ah, oh, now that makes sense because I cared for a person post-op. Now I can really see what's... Um, or, or can you know get a better understanding of what's actually happened prior to me caring for them. So it's such a rich learning opportunity um, for um, for the group, and, and really fortunate that we have got that smaller program. So a great way to reflect. We also have education um, sessions within these um, sessions as well, and as well as active learning tasks where the graduate nurse will bring in something that they feel that they'd like to share with the group. So they're, they're um, the person who's at the core of the meeting. So really um, a great opportunity to learn from each other. We have a number of competency assessments throughout the program. So the competency assessments really help you to feel confident with the skills and the knowledge. So they're um, very, like a, a good framework to learn about or to consolidate or to learn about different skills and then have that confidence and reassurance that um, you can perform that skill safely. We have a series of learning packages, again, to really help you to link the theory to the practice in your clinical setting and also a number of performance development reviews. We know how important communication is and how feedback is, so we have some formal processes throughout the year to ensure that you are getting feedback on your development and you've also got the opportunity to, to let your leadership teams know what's working for you in relation to um, for us to provide the best learning um, environment for you. So the videos um, articulated really clearly in relation to the uh, specific clinical environments. So we have three ward, um, three ward environments where graduate nurses can be allocated. So we have seven graduate nurses per ward. And I won't go through those in any detail because you've seen them from the video. We also have opportunities for graduate nurses to work in the operating suite. So we have eight graduate nurses um, currently in the operating suite this year and that will be the same for next year as well. Next year they'll have the opportunity to rotate through four different areas within that setting. So they'll work in day therapy, um, recovery, anaesthetics and scrub and scout. Um, we've also got Josh who will be on the panel a little bit later who's currently a graduate nurse. So please um, feel free to start writing in some questions so um, Josh can answer them for you. We also have a, um, a short stay unit, well a graduate nurse will be allocated to short stay unit next year. Now this is the, be the first time we've had a graduate nurse within this setting, so a great opportunity. So someone out there who wants to be the very first graduate nurse to have um, worked in the short stay unit, um, certainly worth considering. A great opportunity to really um, to learn some post-operative um, skills. Cancer imaging is also another um, really good area to think about and we'll have Maddie on the on the panel 
who's a graduate nurse currently completing the program within that setting. So please um, start thinking about some questions that you'd like to ask Maddie. Um, day therapy is also an, um, an allocation where graduate nurses can um, go for their graduate nurse program. If a graduate nurse completes their um, program within this setting, they do their first six months in the medical day unit and the second six months is in the chemotherapy day unit where they're supported to provide education, um, administer the chemotherapy and have a really good understanding of the side effects and the um, post-care, um, post-chemotherapy the administration. So again, another really good um, opportunity which isn't offered in too many places. With the application requirements, um, our process is quite straightforward and it is all documented on our website as well. So we are wanting a letter of application with a passport size photo. Passport photos are outdated, aren't they? Very 2019. Um, a CV, an academic transcript with key, two recent clinical appraisals, and we just would like one to be um, acute. So we have a minimum of one acute clinical placement. We understand that clinical placements have been really challenging. Um, it's been quite difficult to get, um, you know, a, a, a more than one acute placement throughout your, um, throughout your studies. And we are planning on having face-to-face -face interviews. So that's our plan. However, we also do have a backup plan. Um, if we are unable to have face-to-face -face interviews because of the social distancing requirements, then we will have a backup Zoom interview process, which we did do last year, which was really positive as well. So then you will have an opportunity to meet us and for us to meet you and, um, you know, a, a, a formal process where we can, um, you know, continue have a conversation rather than just using the video, um, the online video recruitment system through the allocation and placement service. And your referees, um, we will be getting those from the placement, allocation placement service. So as you've um, heard throughout the evening, there's an absolutely amazing number of highlights for um, working at Peter Mac and, and more specifically the, the graduate nurse program. Um, one of the main points I did really want to focus on is the, the size of our program. The support the graduate nurses give to each other is absolutely extraordinary. Um, they know each other very well. Um, they reflect so well together just when we're part of the meetings. They feel very comfortable with, with each other and you can just see the learning um, that is occurring. So um, that's a, a huge bonus from, from where I sit. There are many opportunities beyond the Graduate Nurse Program, and I know that Jack and Maya has already touched on this with our Advancing Nursing Practice model. Um, we certainly encourage ongoing education. Um, we have a, a, a huge number of short courses. Um, we encourage nurses to move on to be, become preceptors and then you know, move on to CNS. So there's a, an incredible um, opportunity post the Graduate Nurse Program. And I just wanted to finish on a real highlight. Last year, the 2020 graduate nurses won the best patient care award for Peter Mac. So this doesn't only demonstrate the incredible care that the graduate nurses were able to provide with the support around them, but it also shows how valued graduate nurses are within the organisation. So that's not just for the 2020 group, that was all the programs prior to that and the programs after. So um, it's a true credit to the graduate nurses and it's a true recognition of graduate nurses within the organisation. So now I'd like to invite Georgia Byrne Nelson, our highly skilled and incredibly dedicated graduate support nurse who will tell you more about her role. Oh, do you mind doing the next one? <clears throat> Hello. Um, thank you, Michelle, for that nice introduction. So, um, as Michelle mentioned, my name's Georgia and I'm the graduate support nurse here at Peter Mac. Um, so, I actually began my nursing career as a graduate nurse here myself in the 2013 grad program. So, even though it was a while ago now, I do vividly remember, you know, the attraction of the program being to me the, the 
the smaller nature of the program and the high level of support they advertised in delivering to their grads. Um, in conjunction with this, the strong focus Peter Mac had on lifelong learning was something that really appealed to me. And this is something that I experienced firsthand as a grad in 2013, but have continued to experience um, thereafter um, throughout my nursing career. And it's really been um, that this strong level of support and this positive um, uh, learning culture that's really enabled me to have endless opportunities within this organisation and why I'm still here today. Um, so I feel very fortunate now to be standing in this role as a graduate support nurse, how, having been a grad here myself. Um, and in this role, I form part of a broader support network who work really closely with a um, strong network of nurses in supporting our current graduates. So some of the things that I do in my role in, in a more day-to-day -day basis is, so I work with the graduate nurses across the clinical areas in which they are placed. Um, and in my day-to-day -day work, I work assisting them with the consolidation um, of their fundamental nursing skills and the development of their knowledge around these. Uh, I assist with preparing and supporting them in the completion of their competency assessments. Um, assist in the developing of their critical thinking skills and giving them an opportunity to re reflect on their practice and, and give feedback. Um, so as Michelle mentioned earlier, we're, we're so lucky here to have such a, to have a smaller uh, grad intake, which really allows us to have um, to provide that tailored support, I think, to the graduate nurses. Um, and I think it's really, as Michelle also, also mentioned before, um, it's, it's about the engagement of all nurses um, being committed to supporting our grads that really, I think, makes it such a great program. Um, so now I'd like to introduce to you four of our incredible graduate nurses that we have joining us here this evening. Um, and I'll go through and introduce them and then I'll give them a bit of an opportunity to, to quickly speak about their experience to date, if that's okay. Um, and then we'll move on to, after that, sorry, to the mentee um, Q&A session. Um, so just before we do that, sorry, I'll just, um, on the slide, hopefully up there now, is just a reminder to go to mentee.com and enter the code that's on the slide now um, if you have any questions for our panel. So first on our panel here we have joining us, we have Josh Hermans, and he's a, a graduate nurse who commenced in February in theatre in the Scrub Scout role. Next to him, we have Carmen um, Larkin, and she commenced the graduate nurse program in February, and he's working on the haematology and breast cancer ward. Uh, next to Carmen, we have Grace, who commenced our Grace, sorry, Whitbread Fee, who commenced the program in March on our medical oncology ward. And next to Grace, we have Maddie Moody, who <laughs> who commenced in March in our cancer imaging department. So now we might go along starting perhaps with Josh, if Josh just wants to share with us a little bit about his experience as a grad here at Peter Mac to date. Oh, thanks, thanks Georgia. Hey, so my name is Josh. Um, as you probably would have seen from the video, I work in the operating suite as a Scrub Scout nurse. Um, I actually started at Peter Mac in February, the graduate program. So I've been going on about three or four months now and it's been amazing in terms of the support and opportunity and the things I've been learning. Um, in terms of what we do in theatre, the Scrub Scout role, it's purely focused on safety, equipment needs, and assisting the surgery from start to finish is probably the best way I could explain it. Um, I had no prior operating suite background before I started, so it's been a massive learning um, curve. But at the end of the day, I still had that clinical um, judgment and critical thinking skills I developed throughout my, throughout my undergraduate practice, which has helped me in good start um, for the, throughout this program. And there's been amazing support and education throughout, which has held me in a good place and made me really excited about what we do here. In terms of coming to theatre for next year um, in the program, um, you'll get four different rotations, which is really awesome. You've got a different experience on different role in the diversity of theatre. There's so many different things you can do and ha the impact you can have on the patient's surgical journey is quite amazing and, the, and they're quite amazing what procedures we actually do at Peter Mac. Um, it, it blows on mind what we can do with the human body and cancer is quite brutal, but the interventions we can also help patients get back to the norm is quite amazing. So it's been an honour and privilege to work in theatre um, throughout the last three or four months and I'm excited every day coming into work. Thank you, Josh. <laughs> 
Hello, um, my name's Carmen and I'm on the Haematology and Breast Ward, um, which is 5A. Um, it's, uh, what can I say, it's an it's a incredible ward. It's um, very, very acute. Um, Haematology itself is uh, very complex, but um, absolutely fascinating. Um, and we also get a bit of overflow of medical oncology patients, um, um, all sorts of streams. So we, it's, we do get breast patients, but also other bits. Um, and then, um, as someone said in the video, we get the occasional surgical patient. Um, so we do have quite a variety. It's, it's not, um, it's not solely hematology. Um, the transition has been, um, uh, as, better than I could have imagined. It's um, obviously been challenging um, and a massive learning curve, as Josh said, um, but they support, as everyone in the video mentioned, is just, um, it's incredible. So there's support from so many different levels. Um, every single nurse on the ward has has made it such a um, pleasurable process, as challenging as it's been. Um, you, there's a preceptor model, so um, you have uh, one preceptor for your supernumerary period, um, and they are all people who have put their hands up to, to do that role, um, which is lovely. They're all people who really um, love educating others, um, so that's that made that first week um, on the floor uh, as lovely as it could be. Um, and then uh, you've got support on the ward, we've got the PDNs who are fantastic, um, and then any level up. So we've got Georgia who comes to see us, Michelle as well. There's literally, you can go to see anyone if you um, just want to ask questions or if you're having trouble with anything at all. Um, and that's just made that, that transition really smooth. Um, I would recommend 5A. I've, I've got an interest in haematology, but also I think it sets you up really well for all kinds of nursing. So even if oncology isn't your long-term goal I think it really sets you up with um, really good nursing habits it's um, because the patients are so acute um, there's a there's a strong emphasis on you know infection control and recognizing signs of deterioration um, and just being so tuned into looking for those signs and symptoms I think um, really sets you up well wherever you wanted to go you know all kinds of nursing um, and Peter Mac program as a whole. I have recommended it to people already. Um, and when I talk to friends having um, going through the same thing in different hospitals, I just feel very lucky that uh, I, I chose Peter Mac and they chose me back. Um, it's very supported. Um, it's a lovely small group and we have these reflective sessions with each other um, pretty much every month, which just helps touch base and just see how everyone else is going um, and you know we all sort of go through waves of having challenging periods um, and little wins and it's really nice to share them and, and just see that we're all going through a similar experience however different the areas are um, so yeah I love loved it thanks Carmen <laughs> Sorry, Michelle gave me a run through and I just completely forgot everything she told me of how to use the microphone. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Grace. I'm one of the um, March graduates. Uh, so I'm on Ward 3A, um, which is fantastic. It's medical oncology. So we see um, a huge range of different types of cancers, um, basically solid tumor cancers um, where the patients generally aren't going for surgery. So we see uh, GI, a gynae, brain cancers, lung cancers, um, a huge range, which is really good. I found it to be super interesting. We've learned like a huge variety of skills, even though we've only been here almost three months, which is crazy also. Um, yeah, so you just get really good at um, learning particular things. Like uh, you get really good at CVAD management. We do a lot of um, IVs on our water, a lot of IV antibiotics, um, and IV therapy, You'll also have nasogastrics, um, just a huge range of stuff. Um, so I feel like you're just constantly learning, which is great. So I'd recommend three to anyone that's applying. Um, and then just like everyone said, with um, the graduate program, 
it's just like the level of support is incredible and the way that the program is structured just feels very like well thought out and intentional the amount of um uh orientation that we had before we started was really comprehensive so you just don't feel like you're being chucked in the deep end which is really nice um so we had training and like little things on like learning how to use the pumps the iv pumps before you go to the ward was really helpful because as soon as you get there like you don't know how to do anything but um you feel a bit more prepared and having a huge range of like supernumerary days as well you feel like you're eased into it and like it's still scary but you feel less scared which is really nice um and the staff are just incredible as well. Like the level of support from from everyone, the educators and everyone um, is amazing. But even just um, the other nurses on the ward, like you'll be walking around during a med round or something and I must just look lost sometimes because I'll pass like five different nurses and they'll just like stop what they're doing. Like, do you need a hand? Like, are you all right? Which is really nice. Um, so you never feel like you're on your own. Um, and yeah, uh, definitely talking to some friends at different hospitals as well, you get sort of an idea of how special the Peter Mac program is. Um, yeah, definitely with a small cohort as well, you feel really well looked after and um, just knowing like some other places, maybe you only get like a couple of supernumerary days or whatever, it just makes a huge difference. Like you just feel so looked after here, which is lovely. So if you're thinking about applying here, I would 100% recommend it. Hello. <laughs> Hi guys, my name's Maddie. Um, I'm a grad nurse from the March intake and I'm working in cancer imaging. Um, so cancer imaging is like a unique area. So I find that you do look after a lot of patients who from a, like a range of, you know, treatment times and stages of their cancer. So I think if you're someone that's really keen to learn and have a challenge like for myself I never had any placements similar to that so getting on to cancer imaging I was just such a steep learning curve like I'm still learning and I think I'll be learning until you know I move on to the wards it's just amazing um, and I found that the transition like before you start you're incredibly nervous you think oh my gosh I don't even know what to expect like will the supernumerary time be enough um, but it really is. And you find that even when you finish your supernumerary time, there's always support and you notice um, that people are always keeping an eye on you, making sure you're okay, checking in with you, which I think makes a massive difference knowing that you have people there that are willing to make the time for you. Um, so yeah, that's just been really great. And one of the things that I found most enjoyable working in cancer imaging is the skills you get to learn. So for me it was IV cannulation it was just like so exciting to get to learn how to do that and CVADs you get to manage those do blood sampling and it just I don't know everything comes together I reckon highly recommend cancer imaging if you're keen for a challenge yeah that's me <laughs> thank you thanks Maddie <laughs> um so we might pass it over now to Trevor with our questions Dementi. Thanks, Georgia. Um, so, first question tonight um, is for Josh. So, Josh, could you tell us a little bit about what drew you to the operating theatre? Okay, so um, in university, I found there was probably like three types of students. There was probably the students that had some idea where they wanted to go in terms of the area of nursing they wanted to do. Um, there was a student who knew exactly where they wanted to go and there were students who didn't have no idea where they wanted to go. I was probably in there somewhere in between. Um, I had a few acute placements on general surgical wards and I was quite interested in surgery and the patient surgical journey. Um, but I had no theatre experience and I did talk to some people on my placement about going into theatre, but I never actually had the opportunity. Um, but in terms of the overall going into theatre, um, one of my cousins was diagnosed with osteosarcoma back in 2012 and um, they had a, some major surgical treatments and they were quite successful actually and it really inspired me seeing her throughout her journey um, seeing how much it meant to her particularly the surgical staff and it was kind of behind the scenes of actually what they did but she still appreciated what they did and it was such a powerful um, thing for her and her life going forward this life-changing treatment she got 
And that really inspired me to um, invoke an interest to go into theatre. So that sort of kind of drew me there, but I still had this uncertainty of what actually goes on in theatre. Like a lot of people, it's this mysterious, dark hidden place in the hospital no one really knows about. Um, but it's very, very interesting. And I was, I was some, had some idea when applying to Peter Mac, I did offer um, theatre. But at the end of the day, it wasn't end of make or break that if I didn't go into theatre, I was going to have a bad time at Peter Mac because, as you can probably see tonight, there's so many different areas Peter Mac provides and they're all very supportive and they're all going to help you grow and nurture as a nurse from your graduate year. Um, but in terms of just going into theatre, that's one of the main reasons I was I had some sort of interest and I had a previous experience through my family. So, yeah. Thanks, Josh, for sharing that. <laughs> OK, so next question. What should we expect to do during our orientation? Would any of the grads like to answer that? <laughs> Carmen? So, on, yeah. Um, it's a really thorough orientation, which is just um, lovely because it's a terrifying time. Um, you, um, yeah, just the days leading up to starting the program were really scary and I think they were for everyone. And then you just have this um, really good solid week almost of um, a huge variety of stuff. Um, so you really get so well oriented, so well um, familiar with the, the building and the people. Um, and by the time um, you're ready to start, you just, you're sort of raring to go. Um, we did all sorts of things. We had talks um, about the program, a more in-depth version of what you've had tonight, much more in-depth. Um, we did basic life support sessions. Um, we did the clinical workshop, which Michelle mentioned, which was really handy because a lot of us throughout COVID last year um, didn't get as many lab as much lab, lab time as we would have liked. So um, there are a lot of skills that we maybe didn't get to do on placement that we'd only done the theory of. So it, it just got uh, it, it, we just got that extra time to go over things, or even just things we hadn't done since maybe our first or second year of uni, um, which just made us feel a bit safer. Um, and as Grace said, you know, a little experience playing with the pumps, things that you're not allowed to do as students, um, that just mean when you go to the ward, you're a little bit more familiar and that just comes with ex experience anyway. Um, we, what else did we do? Um, we had, um, yeah, manual handling. Um, uh, yeah, just, uh, we had four solid days, um, but it sounds like a lot, but it was, each day was actually really lovely. We got to get to know each other as a group, um, get to know the education team and, um, is, yeah, it's just a good, a really good introduction to um, our first year as nurses. Thanks, Carmen. <laughs> okay, so a question here for Maddie. Um, I think that maybe someone's left a word out of this, but uh, I think perhaps the person was asking, Maddie, what's it like working in a non-ward setting? Um, so it's like different but also similar so it's different in the sense that you don't have a patient load like you would in um, a ward setting so instead of having like four patients for your whole shift you're kind of dealing with like a number of patients that are coming in for the day for their appointments so they might only be staying for a few hours at a time and then you're sending them back home or back to the ward um yeah, so it, it, it can be busy and very chaotic like a ward can be. So you're definitely working on those time management skills and your patient health assessment skills will definitely be consolidated into that as well. Um, but yeah, I definitely think um, it's... Yeah, it's it's so different. Like, it's just such a unique experience. It's uh, <laughs> hard to put into words. Um, I'm struggling to think. <laughs> Um, another thing that was also different is that you actually don't give that many medications. So it's very limited. So patients post-procedure, they might be experiencing a bit of pain, so you can help give them some pain relief. But otherwise, like, you're not really doing... Definitely not as many as what you would do on the ward. So I find that that was one less thing that you kind of had to um, worry about on the ward. 
I mean, you can kind of focus on those other skills like your CVAD management and your IV cannulations, those patient health assessments, and just getting to know the department a bit better because you do move around in modalities. So you're always learning something different. So I'm in ultrasound at the moment and like still getting the hang of that. And um, yeah, it's just amazing. So during those procedures, you'll get to assist the doctor, keep the patient comfortable, manage their pain, set up for those procedures, um, help with specimen collection, just those sorts of things. So I think that's kind of how it varies from the ward. Yeah, unless... Patty. <laughs> that's okay. Um, so following on a little bit from the, the question about orientation, so there's a question here. Do graduate nurses get assigned a preceptor throughout their entire grad rotation or is this confined to the first seven supernumerary days? Sorry, I'll get the hang of the microphones by the end of this. Um, yeah, so the preceptor model is we had one preceptor for our first seven supernumerary days. Um, and then after that, you don't have a preceptor. But I found that the support doesn't really go away. Um, my preceptor was so lovely. She would, like, come check on me through the rest of the shifts afterwards anyway just make sure I was doing all right. Um, and you sort of, like, it is a gap being on your own but you don't feel like you're like left out in the cold um at all like you still feel really well supported um but the preceptor model worked really well i found having the same person for the, all of your supernumerary was really good they know exactly where you're at you can sort of increase um your skills day by day and like sort of just start off like super vague just learning what the ward is like and who everyone is and where everything is to sort of learning um, the day-to-day -day structure of a shift um, and then actually like slowly taking on patients. So by the time, the end of the like seven days, you feel sort of ready to be on your own. Thanks, Grace. <laughs> okay, here's a question for everyone. Um, what is your favourite thing about your area? Maddie, do you want to start? <laughs> um, the team, I would say, it's um, there's so many good things about the area, but uh, if I had to pick one, I'd definitely say the team because as part of the grad program, that's so important to how you transition and feeling safe, feeling like you've got support. Um, and that, yeah, to me, that's been the, the, the best thing. I'm probably similar to Carmen in terms of the team here. I think at the end of the day, we have a really beautiful, nice new building here, but it's the people that make Peter Mac, not the building. And in theatre, I think the team down there is amazing in terms of the support and what we bring. But particularly in theatre, I think the closure you get every day from performing your procedures and doing operations and diagnostic things, you get this closure when you go home that you've done your job and you played your role for today and there's nothing, no burden you take home with you back to work, from home to work. So I think that closure and that team and supportive nature is what I really love about theatre. I completely agree, like 100%. I think you can tell that your team was carefully curated, you know, to make this amazing, I uh, just, you know, can't even explain it. Like, and you feel very valued, even as a graduate coming on, you feel very new, but everybody, like, they want you to succeed and they're willing to help you get there, build that confidence. It's just such a supportive environment to be in. And you can tell that management really looks after you as well. Everybody wants you to get your breaks and they make sure that you're coping okay. And yeah, I think it's just amazing, yeah. Um, yeah, I 100% agree as well. And it's really funny because when you talk to grads from other wards, when we get to catch up like this, like, you're like, how are you going? Like, are you enjoying your place? And everyone's like, yeah, my ward's the best. Like, I want to stay here. Everyone's fantastic. I love it. And like, oh, I thought my ward was the best. Like, it's just, yeah, the team's incredible. You feel like a part of the team straight away. People are looking out for you. Um, 
you're never on your own. Like you can have, you can, like people can be super busy and they'll still come and find you make sure that you're doing okay. You leave feeling like, I don't know, you've done your best and everyone's like appreciative of your work, which is really nice even if you're not feeling like you had your best shift. So yeah, definitely the team, 100%. One more thing to add, just um, aside from the team, on, on 5A, and I think probably this is, again, the differences between the areas you can choose depending on what you like. But on the wards, maybe not so much on surgical oncology, but um, we have quite long-term patients sometimes, and it's really lovely if you like that kind of nursing when you get to build relationships over a period of time, um, and which is the appeal for me. Um, and I can also see the appeal the other way when you have a higher turnover and you get to have that closure. And that's so, the, yeah, the options, you know, they're, they're there to meet everyone's kind of style of nursing, I think. Okay, so a few people have asked, do we get to choose which areas we rotate through or are they allocated for us? Um. I can answer that one, Trevor. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, so um, you do get to preference um, the clinical areas in which um, you'd like to rotate to. Um, And this is part of, I guess, when you go to the interview process, (laughs) Michelle's nodding at me, um, there'll be an opportunity to do this at interview. Um, And, yeah, we do our best to, obviously, we're a smaller program to, to align. Obviously, it depends on... Um, how many people preference which area, but usually I think graduates are pretty, uh, we match pretty well to the areas and we're, that seems to work out pretty well. That's all. Okay, a nice easy one. Is there a scrub uniform on the wards? <laughs> yes, we can wear any colour scrubs that we like, <laughs> which is great. It's, and the patients love it. Uh, actually, patients have commented on how they love that we all wear different colours and different colours every day, and it's, um, it's, uh, it does bring a lot of colour and happiness to the wards, I think, and other areas. Okay, so here's a good one. Um, to all the grads, what's been the biggest challenge so far and how did you overcome it? Um, so for me, um, just going back on theatre again, um, it was completely new and it came with a massive learning curve in terms of what actually my role was and my responsibilities. And from the basic things of where everything was, it was a massive environment, big teams, lots of different surgeries we do that I had no idea that was even possible. Um, But in terms of overcoming that challenge, it was really just going back to your supporting networks, the foundation you laid in place from the start, was your preceptorship, your PDNs, your CNEs. It was also just reflecting on your practice about what you're doing well, what you could do better, and building upon the little things and taking the little wins and not for granted, and really having confidence that what you're doing is right and people are supporting you. And at the end of the day, you're human, you're going to make mistakes. But as long as you learn and reflect on those mistakes, you're going to be a better nurse and you're going to be better for your patients in the future. So that's something really, that's really positive for me. Um, yeah, so when we first started, I think a really big challenge was, yeah, having never been to Peter Mac at all, um, have no placements here, just sort of, yeah, adapting to the hospital, learning where everything is, learning how to do all the little tiny processes that you don't think about. They're like maybe when you're a student, um, your preceptor might have sort of just done behind the scenes a little bit, um, like knowing when something goes wrong, which doctor is the one to message because they also change over every few months. So that's something to keep up with. Um, knowing where the phones are, knowing where the BGL kits are, like knowing just tiny little things that you feel like you're asking a million questions every day. And so you feel like you're a bit slower, but that's like to be expected because you're a grad and you're new. So just sort of leaning on people to support you while you sort of adapt to the new environment. Um, But that comes pretty quickly and you get used to it. The other thing is um, adapting to shift work is tricky, um, especially late earlies. Um, And if you don't live so close, it's hard. You just, it's hard to sort of come home. And I find because we're new, 
and well, I don't know if it's because when you, but I'll come home and I'll find it hard to like switch off after a shift. And I just sort of um, run through the day in my head and think about like what I could have done better, what went wrong, all of those things. And I find it hard to sort of just like go to sleep and then start fresh the next day. But um, it's really helpful to have such like a lovely group of grads. We can talk to each other about it and we're also kind of like experiencing the same stuff and we can talk through um, all our concerns and like how we're going, which is really helpful. And then like I just talk to my housemates when I get home and try and relax a little bit and know that like we've done the best we could, just shut off a little bit. And you adapt to shift work slowly, sort of. It's not so bad. (laughs) Um, One of the challenges I came across was the fact that because there's so many patients coming in the ward, sorry, in the department for like so many different procedures, you know, you might see people for port or pick insertions or even removals or um, drains or different types of biopsies. It's sometimes the procedures for preparing that patient or the care after the procedure is quite different. So kind of trying to remember what everybody needs to get done. I often just kind of carry around this cheat sheet book that kind of had everything listed for me. So that was quite helpful. But I think the challenge was just being easy on yourself, like not being too harsh when you're not picking things up as fast as you would like to. And, you know, you do feel a little bit on the slower side because it seems like everybody around you knows what they're doing except for you. (laughs) So I think just maximising the opportunity to ask questions. People are happy. Like they would rather you ask the question than guess. Um, And debriefing, you know, whether it's with your educators, someone on the ward, or even just when you get home with a family member or a friend, it's just always just good to get things off your chest so that you can relax for the night and then start fresh the next day. I find this really helpful. Yeah. And also it's really good um, for the shift work thing. When cancer imaging, you don't have to work weekends (laughs) or or public holidays. That's always a bonus. (laughs) Yeah. One challenge I I have found was um, making time. uh, As a student, you have a given time by your buddy nurse to like get ready to hand over and do a handover and you can practice it and write notes. And when you're actually a nurse, you don't have that time to sit and write your script and, and ready to give your is bar. You, you realise quite quickly that you really just need to know, you need to know these things about your patient. So it was learning and trying to find time throughout your shift to get that information and to store it and so that it just comes naturally by the time handover comes because you don't always have time to write every note that you plan to um, and, uh, you know, write a full ISBA kind of thing. It just needs to be up here. But it does come and it's just kind of accepting that, um, you know, it comes with experience and even in four months I've kind of seen where I've got better at, at doing that and knowing what information to store, knowing what information is relevant um, and just, yeah, trusting that that it, it will come with time and being nice to yourself. Okay, one more question. So this is probably a good question for, for Josh and um, Maddie. Um, uh, would choosing two rotations instead of sticking to one area lead to any disadvantages or vice versa? Is it on? Yep. <laughs> Absolutely no disadvantages. I feel like um, the only thing you might think of is like consistency. But I find that, you know, because you click with your team so well that like you're more than happy to to move on to the next thing and to keep that learning going and they're happy to support you to do that. And I think that like with cancer imaging, like I said, it's such a unique area that when you learn all those skills, you get to transfer them to the next place. And so you might be really confident with one skill that actually a lot of people on that ward don't really perform often. So I think that's quite helpful in that sense. And I just wanted to get a lot of exposure in my first year because you're always learning so much. You're just a bit of a sponge (laughs) taking it all in. So I thought for me, that would be the best thing is to do two rotations. Yeah. And just on that, in terms of um, theatre for next year, for the next year for the program. 
So you'll be doing four different rotations and exploring different areas is a really good learning opportunity. And I think you shouldn't take it for granted. Um, we, we don't do ordinary things here. We do pretty extraordinary things. And it's quite amazing what you can actually see and learn. And that skill set you're going to bring to all different environments in your future practice. And I don't think the anxiety of feeling like I want to build a foundation in a particular area, it can go pretty quickly because at the end of the day, your nursing skills are transferable. Um, wider APRA offer, offer registration for nurses from mental health to emergency nursing is because they believe that nursing skills are transferable across all different areas. So I think it's having confidence to know that you can build your skill set in any area of nursing and have the confidence to act that out. And I think it's a, a quite an amazing opportunity here, particularly in this graduate program, is you can explore many different areas at Peter Mac and you can take that learning opportunity in the future, wherever you may be, whether it's at Peter Mac, wherever it's at any different organisation, and you can use that for the future of all your nursing career. I think that's all our questions for the moment, so I'll, I'll pass on to Michelle. So I'd like to say a really big thank you to our fantastic panel. From behalf of the Peter Mac team here, we'd like to say thank you very much for tuning in and for all your questions. We're um, amazed at how many questions have come through and really apologise for not getting to all of them. But what I will do is I will answer them and I'll put them on our web page. So um, the answers will be coming. Just sorry that we haven't got to them all tonight. Um, so I wish you all the best with the rest of your studies and we look forward to receiving your applications very soon. Thank you.